write down what you love about yourself right now. All the great things about you right now, write them down. Hey guys, Vicky Lemons here, and I'm in the car picking up my daughter from school. And I thought that I would share this message with you today. As you know, I'm a mom. Don't mind my blue tongue. I was eating one of my daughter's airheads. <laughs> but anyway, I thought I would share this message with you because as a mom, if you don't know, I'm a mom. My son is almost 16 and my daughter is almost 13. And I have really great children, but they are children. And I find that people tend to think that when you have really great children, nothing ever goes bad with them nothing ever goes wrong and they do have their own issues they do um, have things that we have to discipline them on and recently we had to uh, discipline our son and I won't go into details about what it was but a way that we chose to discipline him was to give him a message the message that I gave him was, if you don't know, I stopped drinking and I stopped smoking last year um, for many reasons. But number one, I wasn't doing it in excess. And number two, I didn't want it to be a part of my story anymore. And number three, I also didn't want it to be a part of my children's story anymore. And not that I was ever a bad mom to them. I was actually always kind and loving, but I wasn't always at my best. So with that being said, that was one of the reasons that I stopped drinking. And I, and I let them know this. I let my children know. I don't hide anything from my children. I'm never embarrassed or ashamed of my behavior. I use everything as a learning tool. Everything is a learning experience. And the one thing that I shared with them was what I just spoke about was being a part of our story. We all have a story, right? And the people in your lives play a part of your story. And so when I stopped drinking, one of the things I told my children was, just like I don't want it to be a part of my story anymore, I didn't want it to be a part of their story. I didn't want when they look back at memories of their mom, they would have to think was she drinking like that then or was she drunk or was she like I didn't want them to think that who they were interacting with was a version of me that was not me that's how I decided to discipline my son this time I sat him down and I just decided to share this with you guys because as someone who's a survivor of abuse childhood abuse physical sexual and uh, verbal um, I don't hit my children um, I do discipline my children and I think that it's important to share ways that I do discipline my children to show you that you don't have to beat on your kids to get them to um, learn a lesson I'm not telling you what to do you you do what you feel is best for you and your family and your children this is just because I know sometimes people think it's really they don't know how to not do things one way because they were raised doing things a certain way. So if you're interested in not spanking your children and they are teenagers, so this with this lesson, they have to be able to comprehend, okay? Um, but I shared that same thing. I said to my son, I sat him down and I said, do you remember when I stopped drinking, I told you, number one, I stopped because I was doing it in excess. Number two, I stopped because I didn't want it to be a part of my story anymore. And number three, I stopped because I didn't want it to be a part of your story. And I explained to him that it doesn't only go from mommy and daddy to children. We can't, we aren't the only ones that can put chapters into your book. You can also put chapters into our books. And there are certain things, just like there are certain behaviors and there are certain experiences and moments that we do that you will always remember. And there are certain things that you do that we will always remember. And even if you're not intentional about it being a part of our book, 
or a part of our story. There's just certain things that happen that will always be a part of our story because of how significant it is. And to me, that really seemed to resonate with both of my children. They understood that, hey, I know exactly what she's talking about. I don't, and I don't want this behavior to be a part of my mom's story or my dad's story in their book, right? Um, I don't want to write those type of pages in their book. I don't want to contribute in that way to their story, just like they don't want to contribute in that way to my story. And I always approach my children with respect and with um, a calm, strong, firm, but calm tone because I always think about how I'm affecting them 10 years from now how will they think about this conversation in 10 years when their brain is fully formed and they think about man my mom really sat down and talked to me she she was so patient she was so loving but she was so um intent on us understanding exactly how our behavior was affecting us and them at the moment that's my goal anyway so um, I thought it was a good message to share. I think that our children don't really look at them being a part of our story. They think, you know, we're just the ones molding and shaping them. But they don't realize that there's no parenting book. So as we go through life with them, we're learning as well. And they are helping form and shape our book, our story as well. And... I think when they realize how significant their role is to us, not just as us caring for them as a parent, but how they can potentially put not so good things into our story and we will always remember it. I think that that clicks for them and makes them see how much more significant um, they are to us not just as mother and child or father and child, but as person to person, right? So I don't know, I hope this message has helped. Uh, I thank you for watching. If you have any tips that you do or that you use with your family, I would love to hear them. Um, I have many um, things that we do as a family. Uh, this one just kind of resonated with me because I think number one, Sometimes we as parents, we don't realize how important our children are to us, not as mother and child, just as person to person, right? And I think our children don't understand how important they are to us in that way as well, because they always see us as the adult, but they don't understand that there is so much more to us than that, especially when you really care and you genuinely want to see them become you know thriving adults so that's my goal my goal is not to raise great children my goal is to raise great adults and so far so good but man it gets challenging sometimes you know you have to really um develop patience and for my parents out there who weren't raised that way, I was not raised with a patient mother. I was not raised with my father at all. And the father that my mother, the, the male figure that my mother had in the home, her husband was the one that was abusive to me. So I don't know what it's like to be raised kindly, gently, disciplined, but not abused. <laughs> so... I'm not only learning as I go, but I'm also unlearning as I go. And as always, guys, I hope this message has helped. I thank you for watching and God bless.